Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. Welcome back to another video. And in this video, I'm gonna be telling you guys what Imperials are good for in Oblivion. And Imperials, I think, if you ever played Masters of Orion, they are the human. Imperials are basically the people that have a high personality. And that may seem useless at first. It is actually not. Because if their personality and all their skill points are put into speechcraft and mercantile, that means that you have more level ups you can pull off with magic and combat abilities. And I think Imperials, you know, the, the best race for noobs obviously is, uh, in my opinion, obviously, 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 I hate that word. I use it a lot and I hate it. So freaking oxymoron. But for me, the best race is a wood elf for noobs. Now, if you want to play an all-around character, Imperials are the way to go. Or maybe you played the noob race of a wood elf and you kind of want to go hard into something, but not quite. Imperial is kind of the next step for me. I like them because they're highly customizable. You know, they're not god tier by any means. But Oblivion, the way it's built... Sometimes you can get away with not having a god tier, and that's what a, the Imperial is. It is the one non-god tier that you can still get away with with using, because it's just, he's okay at everything. Which means you can make a battle mage that uses a bow and a freaking hammer. You can make a thief that also is the strongest, beefiest, heavy armorist kid in the freaking world. That's what's nice about Imperials, and I think that is overlooked every time... You know, you create a character because you're like, yeah, I figured out how Oblivion works and Pacific, the sun's going down so your camera's really dark and stuff and it looks like you're in a sad room. And But, you know, I want to go hard on my Oblivion character. I want to go hard. I want to make the best mage, the best archer, the best warrior. And we forget that there is the Imperial, the ultimate in all-round race technology. He is the ultimate you can do everything. Plus, his mercantile is really high up. Which means that if you pick mercantile as a major skill and you up your personality and you up your stealth skills, you're going to get some pretty good prices when it comes to selling things. Which is wonderful. Which means you can pay. See, here's, here's something that no one thinks about. You up your mercantile. You pay people to train you in the other areas, and then boom. You all of a sudden have this dude who can sell stuff and get millions of gold off of a freaking rock. And he can pay people to train him. That's the Imperial. The Imperial is that rich person that pays 10 million people to do their job. So I think that's kind of overlooked um, when character creation happens in this game. And I think that's fine because Oblivion's speechcraft and merchantile system are complete cred. It's complete cred. Straight cred. It just sucks. So you, of course, wouldn't think of this. I don't I don't think of this when I make a new character. I never think of it because I'm like, Ugh. Ugh. when you talk about Oblivion, the speechcraft is like, Duh. get it away. Ew. 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 Get it away from me. Ew. I don't like it. So with that being said, guys, Imperials are good for you. If you want to pay people to train you, basically boost your way through the game. And I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games. And I will see you in the next episode, stream, or vlog of whatever I decide to make.